sutikite Vitality DNA steigėja ir vadova Karoli Rocicka. Good morning, everyone. My name is Karolis, and I'm a founder and CEO of the health company called Vitality DNA. Um, I'm a guy who is very passionate about health. So over two years ago, uh, I resigned from my comfortable life and job in London to uh, think of how can I help in contributing and solving a human health problem. I started with a uh, blank sheet of uh, paper, and my first data point which I looked at was this. This is the number of people who die globally every year. Is it a large number? On one hand, uh, this is less than 1% of the total population. On the other hand, this is the size of a large nation. These are the people uh, who die with experience, skills, and they left our society. So then I started looking in more detail, okay, what actually causes these 56 million people to die? So uh, these are the top 10 causes of death in 2015. Um, so the first group of diseases uh, which is dominating um, the disease and death is heart and cardiovascular diseases. Um, so how our heart functions, how our cardiovascular system functions is the main cause of, of why people die. Then we have another group of diseases in lungs and respiratory diseases. Um, here, there are a number of causes, such as pollution, um, smoking. Um, so if there is anyone in the audience here who smokes, keep in mind that that might most likely will be the primary cause why you die in the future. And there is no scientific debate about it. And then you'll see a number of other causes. Um, there are two interesting observations about this chart. Um, firstly, our media is dominated with the topics of war, terror, uh, but keep in mind that these do not actually result in the primary causes of why people die in the world. The second uh, interesting observation is that um, such uh, infectious diseases like HIV or AIDS, uh, they are no longer in, in this list because we learned how to, to manage those diseases. However, the primary takeaway for me was uh, that a number of these diseases, take it heart, diabetes, Alzheimer's, they have a large lifestyle component to it. What that means is that by taking conscious health decisions while you're still healthy might help delay uh, the occurrence uh, of these diseases and you will have a longer, more productive life. So then they looked at the, uh, how does our quality of life look like over the time of, of, of your lifetime? So the chart um, looks more or less like this. Sorry, I'll just get rid of the... Uh, so what that means uh, is that, you know, we have a few phases in our life. The first phase is, is growing, you know, our bodies are growing uh, stronger, we are more energetic, we reach the peak of our health around mid-twenties, early thirties. Then our bodily performance starts plateauing, so uh, in the early thirties uh, and forties we're still feeling strong, no longer as, as strong and healthy as we used to be uh, at the age of 25, but still uh, relatively good performance. And then our health starts gradually deteriorating. We start getting more uh, symptoms, uh, joint aches, headaches, we start sleeping worse. However, the most deterioration in, in health starts uh, around the 60s and where the people actually start uh, getting a combination of various diseases which ultimately cause a death. So, then I thought, okay, what can we do about this chart? So um, there are two observations here. So 
obviously, we, we can aim in uh, increasing the overall longevity. But is it actually the uh, final objective uh, of the healthcare system? Or do we actually want to also increase a productive life so that our body and mental performance stays constant throughout a lifetime, and actually only at the end we, we start seeing the deterioration and death? So then I started looking, okay, how our healthcare system is designed and how is it actually operating and what are the objectives uh, of, of our healthcare system. So um, here, uh, basically throughout the history of medicine, uh, taking care of our health was primarily about managing symptoms. So while you're still healthy and without any symptoms, no one is actually taking care of your health. And only when you start getting headaches, rash, broken leg, you start seeking help uh, in the healthcare system. So there are two main components. So basically, yes, it's all about symptoms management. And the second component is that it's all primarily delivered through the uh, hospital or clinic setting. So you have a small, a small group of people who are actually experts in health, and you go and see help uh, from them. However, this structure and this picture is, is changing rapidly. And uh, the future of a healthcare, the future of a medicine, uh, which we will uh, see, uh, will uh, have two key uh, changes compared to the picture which you see on the left. So firstly, uh, there will be a gradual uh, shift to prevention versus treatment. So actually, you will no longer wait until you start getting symptoms in order to start thinking about your health. And you will make uh, conscious, proactive decisions on how to manage your health in order to increase your productive life, uh, lifetime. And uh, the second uh, trend is that that small group of people called doctors uh, will no longer be dominating uh, your uh, view on, on health. So with increasing technologies, increasing knowledge, consumers themselves, and note that I'm using consumers, not patients, uh, consumers themselves will start um, managing their health more proactively. So right now we are Googling our uh, symptoms, uh, we are Googling our conditions, uh, technology is enabling us to get more data about our body and about our health. You know, you, you see various examples such as wearables, uh, which will enable us to understand how our body functions. So, so if there is this trend uh, in prevention versus treatment and our proactive approach to, to our health, what does it actually mean, prevention? Uh, what can we do now as healthy individuals in order to extend the productive uh, lifetime uh, of our lives? So, number one impact and number one effect uh, which actually has most impact uh, in our health is nutrition. We eat uh, multiple times every day, and this is the, the main cause uh, of the deterioration of our health. And by changing nutrition, by making uh, conscious nutrition choices, we can actually significantly improve uh, our health. W what is the challenge with that? Um, the challenge uh, with nutrition is that every human biology is different. The way our metabolic pathways work are different. So at this stage, we have certain general rules on what, what that means, health and nutrition, such as eating less sugar, drinking more water. But there are a lot of elements which are personalized to you. Take carbohydrates, which is a primary uh, source of energy. You know, we don't know which carbohydrates are good for us. You know? Rice can be good for me, but it cannot be good for you. So, Nutrition is the area we, which uh, we started looking very actively and how we can contribute in helping people understand uh, what they should eat and what they should not eat. The second area of preventive health is physical activity. It is important to move. And 
it is clearly known that physical activity increases the heart rate, you know, helps your heart condition, helps you to, to, to stay younger for longer, helps you get rid of, of cancerous cells. So you have to move. Um, the third and fourth areas which uh, we, we also started looking is uh, sleep and stress. You know, yes, the quality of sleep is very important to regenerate your body uh, every day. And the modern life um, is full of stressful situations, so the way how you manage these situations it will have an impact on your health. So this is not an exhaustive list, but this is the, one of the main areas which we, we started looking at. So if you want to have a one takeaway from this speech, it's just this slide. So if you want to stay healthy, think about these topics. So obviously, uh, it's easy to say that, OK, guys, you have to eat healthier, move more, uh, have uh, more sleep. Uh, however, there are a number of challenges to that and, and how you get the benefits of these uh, preventative actions. So one is obviously laziness. You know, By default, we are designed in a way that we should uh, preserve energy, you know. So any type of effort is difficult for us. Going to exercise is difficult for us. Going to seek a medical advice or uh, make more conscious nutrition uh, decisions, this is difficult because that requires energy. And by default, we are all about preserving energy. Secondly, now preventive health is so inconvenient, you know. If you want to make more conscious health decisions, still uh, requires a lot of effort from your side. You know, you go and do regular blood checks, still requires effort. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, what we are looking at is that most of the advice which is available right now for healthy people, this advice is still very generalized. You know, yes, we, we know the rules that, yes, we, we have to go and exercise, we need to drink more water, eat more fiber, less sugar, but still, Every human biology is different. And we, we are trying to look on how we can solve these issues uh, with the proposition which we built. So basically, we designed a product uh, called Vitality DNA. This is a wellness program which has five components to it. Uh, this is a program, by the way, which you can actually buy online and, and you get it to your home. So you receive a box which contains all what you need actually to be uh, part of that program. Uh, and the first component of the program is, is genetics. So we take a saliva sample from you, uh, we extract DNA, sequence that DNA to convert that to the code, and then we look for genetic variants and try to understand what certain genetic variants means to, to your health. Do you have a higher predisposition for certain diseases? Are you lactose intolerance? Do you have increased injury risks? And then these kind of uh, phenotypes. Uh, every human uh, whole genome is comprised of 3.2 billion letters. So it's a lot of information, a lot of data to process. So we'll look at certain areas of a genome to understand, okay, what impact could it have um, for your nutrition, for your physical activity, and other health areas. The second component uh, which we are looking at is your microbiome. Uh, so, every human body is comprised of around 10 trillion cells. However, we have over 100 trillion bacterial cells in our genome. So, actually, we have 10 times more bacterial cells than our own cells. And the uh, microbiome plays an important role in how our body operates. Most of the uh, microbiome, uh, most of the bacteria which we have lives in our gut. So we have around two kilograms of bacteria living in our gut, which plays a very important role in your mental health, in the way you metabolize foods. So our objective is by taking a small uh, stool sample from you, is to actually sequence those bacteria to understand what kind of bacteria live in your gut and what implications uh, uh, these bacteria might have on your health. And based on that, we will provide you actionable insights. The third component to our program is uh, blood testing. So again, we have uh, at-home collection kits for you to prick your finger and produce a uh, small sample of blood, 
which is again sent to our uh, lab for, for processing. So we uh, report uh, certain markers, such as cholesterol levels, to you without a need to leave your home. The fourth component uh, is the online health assessment. So uh, we invite you uh, to complete an online health assessment uh, where we ask questions about your health history, about your lifestyle, about your dietary patterns, about your wellness goals. So why do you come to this program? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to improve your physical condition? Do you want to avoid lifestyle diseases? Uh, and the fifth element, so in this program, we, we provide a fitness tracker which generates uh, activity, uh, sleep, and continuous heart rate uh, data. So this is a step where we generate a lot of biological data about you. So that helps uh, us to understand uh, your biology, the context, and on the basis of this data, uh, by using sophisticated algorithms, we produce personalized, actionable recommendations to you, what you should do and what you should not do. So the way that works is uh, that, firstly, yes, we, we, once, once all the tests are done, we invite you uh, to read the results of those tests. Uh, we classify all the recommendations to you across different health dimensions, such as nutrition, fitness, sleep, stress, and others. We prioritize them so you know where to focus on uh, uh, in terms of making positive changes in, in, in your lifestyle. But we also understand that your health is not about one-off testing. Your health is, is a continuous process. Uh, so what we aim to do is actually work with you throughout the program period in order to help you in making those positive behavioral changes. So uh, what that means is that we firstly do uh, blood and microbiome retesting on a regular basis, but we also provide you support uh, uh, by uh, helping you access our in-house medical team so you can ask questions about test results, about recommendations, or any other type of questions. So we will be with you throughout the program period. Uh, a quick note, so for the attendees of uh, Login Conference, uh, we are offering 50 pounds off of our program. Uh, so if you use login referral code, then, then booking online. So apologies, organizers, for, for this short marketing plugin. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so what, what does it actually mean? So um, we produce all that information about you, provide you um, health recommendations. Uh, so by using the products like ours, yes, it helps to extend your productive lifetime. Yeah? So um, by uh, some years or decades, however, there are a lot of health technologies uh, currently in the pipeline globally, which will have a transformative impact on your health and your longevity. Um, we'll hear about uh, the rev revolution in, in gene editing technology, so uh, the current technologies are uh, significantly more accurate in finding the precise locations in your genome for, uh, to edit, and then we, we design the proteins which help you uh, cleave your genome in order to make the corrections. So um, over the past decade or so, um, genetics or genomics industry was all about reading your genome. So reading your genome and understanding its function. Now we are already reaching the stage where we not only read the genome, but actually can make corrective actions. Um, stem cells, again, uh, the massive area where uh, you will have um, uh, which will have regenerative impact, uh, so by helping you regenerate your joints, your muscles, uh, grow organs, and so on. Biosensors. Um, so imagine we, we, we are only at the foothills of, of this uh, sensory revolution uh, of, of our body. You know, we see the examples of, of uh, fitness trackers and so on, but imagine that our cars have hundreds of sensors, and if something is wrong, we see that in the dashboard. However, we still don't have sensors which are monitoring our health, and that's going to change. So we are starting with small things like these, uh, but soon we will have sensors which will be monitoring the performance of our organ systems, 
and will be helping us in, to identify issues before the, we see them as, as appearing as symptoms. So this will um, truly re revolutionize in how we monitor our bodies, monitor our performance, and how we make preventative actions in order to preempt the problems which might occur in the future. Um, synthetic biology, again, here we are already at the stage where we start creating biological organisms by, uh, on our own. So imagine that uh, in the future we will be able to create synthetic bacteria which you'll um, ingest in your body and which will help you metabolize certain foods, for example, if you're, for example, gluten intolerant. Um, liquid biopsy is another area where basically by taking a blood sample, we can, uh, the technology is already sensitive enough so we can identify the cancer tumor DNA circulating in our blood much earlier than what can be identified by just doing an MRI scan. Um, artificial organs, another area where basically organ transplantation is a big problem uh, globally. There is a lack of organs and the current initiatives in growing human organs in pigs or building artificial organs such as liver, kidneys, hearts, you know, will dramatically uh, improve our quality of life and longevity because you'll be simply able to, to replace these organs. Again, imaging is another example of early diagnostics. You know, the current high-resolution MRI scans are already able to identify cancer tumors at two millimeters level. You know. This is a game changer compared to what uh, technologies we had 15 or 20 years ago. So, what do all technologies actually mean to us? So, if you look at uh, 1840, the average life expectancy for humans were around 45 years. And that was normal to live 45 years. So fast forward to 100 years, this uh, life expectancy increased to uh, 67 years. Good progress, uh, but is it actually enough? Now, our life expectancy, so the people who are born now, um, at the current stage of technologies, which we have now, is over 80 years. You know, some of the developed markets, such as Japan, Switzerland, you know, they are approaching late 80s, soon it will move to 90s. However, this was based on the gradual evolution of healthcare technologies. However, now we are at the stage where the pace of acceleration in, in, in development of those technologies is, is increasing significantly, and that will have a dramatic impact on our life expectancy. We will reach a point in the future, possibly in our lifetimes, and I'm truly hoping for that, where every year which passes by actually adds more than a year of your life expectancy. So that means that the technologies will be developing so fast that every chronological year which passes by actually adds an incrementally more than one year in your lifetime. And what that means is that we will actually reach the point of um, biological escape velocity. It means that you know, we'll be at the position where we'll be able to live significantly longer than we do live now. And this is a dramatic change for us as a humanity, because up to now, um, a lot of what was happening with us was a random chance. You know, the way the life appeared on Earth, the way we became as human sapiens, the way we uh, became a dominating species uh, on Earth was mostly a random chance. So we took biology as given. However, we are now at the stage where we can take control of that biology. And I'm not even touching the topics from the technology field, such as robotics, artificial intelligence, and so on, but looking from purely biological perspective, we're not looking at biology as some sort of externality but we actually already can take actions which affect our biology. 
I mentioned gene editing, you know, at some point, you know, once all the legal and ethical debates um, will be resolved, you know, and will be more comfortable, for example, with editing the human embryos to improve the quality of those embryos and avoid certain detrimental diseases. This is just an example of how we take control of that biology. And at some point in the future, basically, we will uh, have a choice of how long do we actually want to live. And what that means is that our definition as who we are as humans will change. It will no longer be about having one career. It will no longer be about having one family. We'll have a choice of what we want to do in life and how, we want to, uh, how long do we want to live. And, and that is a big step change in, in our species. So when I meet people, um, one of the usual questions which I ask them is, how long do you want to live if you have a choice? And by live, I mean it's not about the longevity, but actually having a productive life. That means that you will no longer need to stay in bed and have constant care for the last 20 years of life, but actually having a full, productive life. Is it 100 years? Is it 150 years? Or is it 500 years? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>